What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Apologies for not doing the status report for the 8th of August, as I was on holiday for those that didn't know. But what I will do now is mix in what to expect for 0.63, the Gamescom demo, and some information from the latest status report. So pretty much, just a quick summary of what we know so far. Let's kick things off with lead producer Eugen. Everything starts with how you control a game. It needs to feel just right when the game is making it hard to do what you actually want to accomplish through arbitrary complexity or inconsistency, it quickly becomes tedious. As this demo features the new player controller, animation system, physics and much more, it will feel different at first glance. Interacting with players, AI or environment should feel much smoother. As most of us should know by now if you've been watching my channel for a while, most of the problems with DayZ in its current state that we play now is due to the legacy technologies still tied to them. And what we should see in this Gamescom demo is progress so far with 0.63 onto beta, with these new work-in-progress technologies, once Legacy has been removed from the equation. Of course, the player controller itself relates to everything about how the player moves and interacts with the world, in response to player input and things happening in the world around them. With that said, it's a very, very important part of DayZ, as well as the inventory, which I will now quote from Eugen again. It will feature the new inventory implementation, which again should feel much smoother and faster as we have invested quite a lot of time to do this properly, and one large change that we expect to have a significant impact on how people play. You won't be able to move with the inventory open. A lot of the things that people have used the inventory to solve, like finding small items or interacting with their weapon to avoid the delayed quick bar, will be long gone. Items will show their icons in the world as shown on screen now, as well as all action being moved to contextual methods and the quick bar will become a core part of your setup as you explore the world of DayZ. You will get more slots as you get higher tier items, which in translation will increase the amount of stuff you can get done quickly in the world. Which leads us on to, there are tons of new animations coming in to show the different state of the character, exhaustion for example, and many detailed systems trying to avoid using text and heavy use of the UI, so that living your life in Chernerus is all about your character. New gestures that will spice up interaction between players, hopefully causing a laugh or two, or making sure you can understand each other over a long distance. Also, a lot of new UI changes that will focus on giving you enough detail if you want, or just immerse into the character in front of you. Tons of new sounds, both ambient, character, or weapon related. There is a new synchronization model that is quite different from what we've had before, hoping to support the full scale of 100 players and tons of AI. All these things will be stress tested heavily to make sure there are no issues when we go live. A lot of the things are, however, heavily work in progress. But also, for the first time, all of the new tech is in and working with new data. In regards to not being able to move while the inventory is open, this is going to be very interesting as we've had the ability to move while it's open since the beginning of development, and hopefully it doesn't take us too long to get used to. And moving on to lead designer Peter, as we all should know by now from previous status reports, they have scratched the old firearms and melee implementations and started from the ground up to allow us to fulfill our vision of having more control over firearms and melee fights. Ranged combat with firearms is defined by their handling and aiming models. So far, on the handling side, we have both loading of firearms with either magazine or chambering directly with ammo from the inventory, quick slots, and even from the ground. Next is the mechanism manipulation itself, where you can feed ammo from a magazine to chamber in case of manual firearms, or eject ammo in automatic ones. It's also used to unjam the mechanism once it gets jammed by a casing not being ejected properly. But the aiming model of firearms is where the real fun begins. Currently and finally, we have a new sway mechanic. It mimics breathing with constant vertical movement, as well as corrections of hands, direction with subtle random horizontal movement. It's very effective and robust design solution which allows us to modify output by plenty of factors, like firearm attachments configuration, especially handguard and buttstock, and its weight, character stance and movement, amount of stamina, overall character state, with all of that, unpleasant things like low body temperature or diseases, and of course also the hold breath feature. Recoil is another functional part of the aiming model now. While a projectile is fired, we've introduced movement of firearms in all three dimensions. We are experimenting with pre-animation recoils, which are procedurally modified to produce nice looking visuals with the ability to differentiate between firearms. Similarly to Sway, it can be modified. This time it could depend on calibre, barrel length, overall firearm weight and its attachments, especially muzzle devices like brakes or compensators. And we are also considering impact from stamina. What's still missing is some sight's misalignment in the aiming model. The same goes for lifting firearms next to obstacles. However, we will get there, as both are a must-have for a proper aiming model. 
And now a quick update regarding the new melee combat. In its current state, it's already way ahead when compared to the old system. Apart from the full body attack animations, which can now be chained into combos and opponents react to hits with proper strength and direction of impacts. There is also a dashed attack from Sprint implemented now. Peter would like to highlight the current melee targeting implementation, which is taking length of a melee weapon into account, as well as the distance direction and vertical angle to the opponent. Combined with rotating and dragging your character towards selected targets during attack animations, it produces great looking, fluid and addictive melee combat. It's quite hard to miss your opponent now, gone are the days of grotesque melee fights, where everybody ran in circles trying to play a game of chance to deal some hit. And personally for me, I'm really looking forward to trying out this new melee combat system. I believe how the melee system works currently is a projectile at the end of your melee weapon swing which causes the actual damage to your target, as there was no previous way of doing proper melee in legacy technology, and now there will be. And finally from Peter, we also introduced some changes to controls of the new character. What really stands out is changing of stances, which is using one key now instead of three previously. With programmers and animators, we are discussing missing moves of the new character, like leaning, jumping or climbing. Oh yeah, he said climbing, as we would like to push on these and make them more interesting for gameplay. And of course, as always, remember this is all very much work in progress. What's going to be seen in the Gamescom demo, which will also have its own map built around Starroy including new roads, rocks, and more reworked old assets as we are gradually improving the visual fidelity and leaving the old stuff behind. Only a subset of player usable items will be spawning for the purpose of quick access, as we expect the turnover to be quite large. The density will also be much higher in the Gamescom demo to make sure you can try more things in a short span of time. Besides the map, you can also expect new particle effects implemented with infusion technology, new character faces, and much more. More importantly though, the team have plans for extensive online coverage of all the things they're about to show at Gamescom. Just to pick a few that will happen during the Gamescom week, Daisy will be live on the Twitch Gamescom stage for about 15 minutes, talking about the demo and Daisy beta in detail, including some gameplay. Sadly I can't be there myself, but hopefully I get the time to watch this coverage live. I can't afford to miss any juicy Daisy information, you know? I hope I haven't missed any information regarding what to expect with 0.63, beta and the Gamescom demo. Let me know in the comments below if I did miss anything out. And again, apologies for the lack of the status report last week. I hope this video makes up for it. There will be more DayZ coverage coming soon on both YouTube and Twitch. Oh yeah, the streams are coming back, baby. Mainly in preparation for 0.63. My PvP has got pretty rusty since I've had a little bit of a break. I need to get back in the swing of things. Yeah, with that said, with this new player controller and inventory implementation, I think we might all have to relearn how to play DayZ and get good. I'll see y'all in China soon, and as always, I recommend you read the status report yourselves in full for the most amount of information that they hold. All links will be in the description below. Remember to leave a like, and I appreciate the subscribers. I'll see you peeps next time.